He tried to release his grip, but he could not. It burned through his, the fingers of his right hand, releasing his grip, and he fell 25 feet to his death. After lying dead on the ground for approximately five minutes, he came to with his sidekick pounding on his chest and giving him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Hughes delivered John back from the dead. But he was, however, in bad shape. The electricity grounded to the pole through his abdomen, leaving his intestines protruding. The voltage is also burned his left thigh as well, exposing his thigh bone from his knee several inches up. His flaming clothes had to be put out upon reaching the ground. He couldn't focus with his eyes and he thought he was blind. What was it like he, to receive 7,200 volts, you ask? He says it was super hot. It felt like my blood was boiling, my brain was going to explode. It felt like a monster was savagely attacking his body. The doctors wanted to cut off John's left leg, but he told them, I can't ride a horse with one leg, and if I can't ride a horse, I do not want to live. The doctors did, however, cut off his right arm just below his shoulder. Despite the massive electrocution, he survived. What hurt the most afterwards was his chest, which had been worked over by his rescuer during the CPR process. After a mad dash to the Ponca City Hospital, an ER nurse asked John what he was allergic to. And ladies and gentlemen, while staring death in the face, he says, I'm allergic to electricity. It makes me break out just a little bit. <laughs> Proving his sense of humor was still intact, ladies and gentlemen, he spent five weeks in the Tulsa Burn Center. And the doctors reported that there was no apparent brain damage, but he will be a little short-handed. <laughs> so John checked himself out of the hospital, went home and started breaking a colt that he had bought while he was in the hospital. In 1975, he took a liking to Judy Crabtree and they got married. Ladies and gentlemen, John and Judy are responsible for what is now the most sought after gang in the rodeo world today, the one-armed bandit gang. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John S. Payne. who usually allowed the cattle herds to pass through for a good trade or some beef. It looks like John has replaced Pal Pal with his good mule, his trusty mule. Around. He's riding on a trailer, 12 and a half feet in the air, while turning circles, shooting Colt 45 feet, sinker 15 miles an hour across the arena, ladies and gentlemen, and there's nothing more sure-footed than his trusty mule. Sometimes they're even still going while he jumps off. That is why he is the 15th time PRCA 
Rodeo Act of the Year, the one-armed bandit gang, the man who inspired it all, him and his daughter and his son all practice it. Put your hands together for Mr. John Page. Gadler of Oklahoma, where it calls home in the northwest corner with your arrival to account for the panhandle. Boom! And he exits the arena. I can watch this man all day and I can talk to him even longer. A true gentleman. economic activity in the American West. There were relatively few conflicts in those days with the Native Americans who usually allowed the cattle herds to pass through for a good trade or some beef. It looks like John has replaced Pal Pal with his good mule, his trusty mule.